Hey everybody, welcome to Sewing Report Live. I'm Jennifer Moore and welcome. And in case you haven't noticed yet, we are moving into a bit of a new production phase. So hopefully this, this stream has better quality, better audio. I'm actually gonna do a few things. Um, we'll wait a second to see who logs on here. But in case you don't know me, I'm Jennifer Moore and my, my goal is to help you discover your love of sewing. Every Sunday at 3 p.m. I do a live show where we talk about various things that affect the sewing community and you guys asked for this. You wanted to know what it was like to create YouTube videos, how to start a YouTube channel, what, what's all involved and how I produce my videos. So that's what this week is going to be all about. And in fact, um, normally I've been trying to keep the shows at an hour. Um, if you guys have a lot of questions, I'm going to take it longer. But anyways, let's get started with the show and hopefully you guys are watching. So anyways, uh, hopefully this is public. If you are here, let me know and I am going to get started, but we'll give everybody a few seconds to get in here if you are not already here, but uh, hopefully, all right, we've got uh, apparently seven people watching. So let me know where you're uh, watching from. Hello, Sewing Daddy. And hopefully you'll notice that uh, we've got a few new things for the show going on, like, like this. So yeah, we're up in the production value. I'm starting to use open broadcast software and a real microphone. Let me know if you experience any problems with this stream, like audio wise or video wise, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, yesterday I did like seriously three hours of testing for this, just to make sure that today's show went as smoothly as it can. Um, that's why in case you got a notification yesterday just saying, hey, she's live, I didn't realize it was set to public. So I had to set the streams to private just because I was doing a bunch of tests to check the audio and to make sure that my voice was in sync, but I think we're in okay shape. Hello everybody, we've got uh, someone from Canada, Kate, we've got U of M lady, Jen, and we've got Linda from Montana, and we've got another, we've got lots of Jens, Jens from California, and I've got something special for you guys. So first of all, we've got my name here. So this is, this stuff, this software is really cool and it's free. It's called Open Broadcast Software, and I looked up a few tutorials. I don't know why I waited so long to do this. And uh, yeah, anyways, uh, we've got Doherty from here, and we've got Sewing Daddy from Rochester. Wow, and Sewing Daddy, I had no idea you were from Rochester. I'm from Lancaster, New York. Do you know where that is? It's from uh, the Buffalo area. And I've got another surprise for you guys that I'm pretty psyched about, and that is that finally we will be able to see the chat window actually in the stream. Guys, check this out. We can see all of the chats now. So we can see everybody's comment. So now I don't have to like do the jerry-rigged thing of copying and pasting everything into the comment afterwards. So hopefully this is a good way for us to be able to see everybody's comment. So that's pretty sweet. So anyways, welcome. We got Melinda from Rehoboth. Beach, am I spelling that right? And that's in Delaware, correct, I believe? Anyways, um, let me know what you think of this new uh, new setup. And hello, we've got Gothic Lenny. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right either, from Michigan. Um, anyways, so this hour, actually longer if you guys want it, we're gonna be talking about how I started a YouTube channel, what my background is, I'll tell you more about producing the videos. And even these shows, um, even though it seems very casual, it actually takes a bit of planning and like this week we, you know, I was trying to test out this open broadcast software to make sure that it worked okay. And it just took a lot of trial and error. Hopefully my voice is in sync with the video. And I'm actually, I've got my iPod. In case you didn't realize this, all the previous shows have actually been all done on an iPod touch. I'm not joking. Um, so yeah, not even an iPhone, just an iPod touch. So that might be a little, that might be a little sad. I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to try to watch it on my iPod just to make sure that everything looks okay. And actually it looks pretty decent. I'm just kind of checking it out here, but I'm actually going to be monitoring everybody's comments. And again, this, uh, this hour um, is open to questions. So if there's anything you wanted to know about how I do the YouTube channel and all that wonderfulness, uh, let me know because that is what this hour is going to be all about. 
But yeah, so we've got this, the chat window. I actually really like that because now you can actually see what everyone's saying. Um, let me know if there's any problem, if you're experiencing any problems with that. But from what I can tell, I think, uh, I think it seems to look okay so far. I know, knock on, knock on wood, I think we're good. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what the, you know, how I started the channel and just everything that goes into it. Also, can you make money from YouTube? Um, you know, you, I'm sure you've seen those articles and stories about people like PewDiePie or Jenna Marbles or Ryan Toys Review, which makes like a gazillion dollars a year. And you're probably wondering, you know, can you really make money with this stuff? Like, is it possible? Um, and I do have a real job. So this is doing this channel and doing Sony Report is not my actual occupation. This is something that I personally do for fun. Um, so I spend a lot of time on it, but it's only because I'm very passionate about getting people to sew and showing people that sewing is not as difficult as it seems. And I just want people, especially younger people, to see how cool it is and how fun it is because I think there's a, there's a lot of misconceptions about sewing and there's a lot of things that people don't know. So I figured, you know, if I can throw my voice in there and throw, you know, what I have to offer in there, maybe it will help and do something I don't know. But I figured it was worth a shot, right? I mean, I don't know. So anyways, let me get, I'm, I'm just going to check out my chat in here just as well, just to make sure everything looks, looks okay. And uh, yeah, so we are live. Yes, I really, okay, this chat thing is pretty awesome. And I can actually make the chat window bigger too, if you guys want it. So that's the cool thing. I can, like, I can even change the width of this. So I can be like, I can be like 550. Let's try that. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, I really like this feature and uh, I, I think this will kind of help us, especially since you guys are commenting so much, at least you can see everyone else's comments and also see who they are, like if they have a channel you wanna check out or if they link to something, um, you can at least see it in the video as well. So anyways, um, I don't exactly know where to start, but I do wanna start off by saying this. Um, I guess the reason I started the YouTube channel is my background is I'm a TV news producer. So I've spent uh, the last 15 years of my life doing that. Um, I know it's a pretty all-encompassing word, but in producer can mean a lot of different things. I produce newscasts, uh, live shows, a lot of tape segments, and I also have a lot of experience uh, field producing and booking interviews. Like when you see a guest on a show, they need someone to book it. So I've worked as a booking producer. I've done some planning. So basically if a TV station needed to plan coverage like for, you know, an event coming up or even breaking news, I've been involved in getting all the logistics together, sending crews places, um, even booking travel. And there's a lot involved. Um, and there's also a lot of different types of producing. I've worked for uh, local stations and I've also worked for a couple TV networks. So that's the background of what I did, I got a communications degree from a small school in Pennsylvania called Grove City College. Hardly anyone's ever heard of it, but that's okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'd done a few internships and then I got a producing job. And, and if you know anything about TV news, you know that um, to get started, you really need to start out in a smaller market. Like, so I, my first job was in El Paso, Texas, but I'd done internships in Pittsburgh, uh, Charleston, West Virginia, which is actually a very lovely place. And I did another internship in Youngstown, Ohio. So the world of TV news is not at all glamorous. It's a lot of, um, you know, especially when you're starting out very low paying jobs. Um, and a lot of the people I know in the business have also done the same thing. So I got my start out kind of producing is, uh, you know, writing stories and going out into the field and um, helping to do interviews and then you know I would shoot stand-ups and that sort of thing and that's where I really learned to write and to edit and when I started learning editing a lot of TV stations were editing on what's called tape to tape which is where there's no like you know Final Cut Pro you're literally on two tape decks and you're editing one tape to another it is my god one of the most frustrating <laughs> ways to edit but that's how I learned to edit videos and edit packages um, so the my knowledge of producing just goes over for just years and years of experience doing it um, most of the stories i've done have been kind of not boring stuff but stuff like you know city council meetings or you know floods or like you know not fun stuff and i guess one of the things that i 
that I like to do on my own is I want to produce the kind of stories that I personally like and not, you know, not every story you're assigned to and most of the stories that reporters are on are they're assigned to it or it's something that happens like fire or something or a crime. And I wanted to produce stories that I really enjoyed producing. I love long form producing. I love doing, um, you know, like kind of documentary style producing. And I just love doing fun stuff. Uh, one of my jobs involved uh, doing celebrity interviews. So that was interesting. Uh, as you could probably imagine, there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, interesting people out there. So, uh, okay, so we got Melinda. Seems like the U.S. is a bit slower in getting back to sewing than other countries. And I would, I would agree with that. I think the, U the U.K. sewing is totally out there. So if we can get the U.S., get some, and I think we just need some kids to start sewing. Kids, teens. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. Um, we got Myra here. Thank you very much, Myra. I really appreciate the feedback. And, yes, yeah, so I'm pretty jazzed because now you guys can actually see the comments right in the screen. So that is pretty cool. And I'm using a much better microphone. So that's why I've got the earphones in is so that I can make sure that the microphone is actually on. So anyways, that's my background with producing. Um, oh yeah, one job I worked at the Home Shopping Network as a producer. Um, so I've done a lot of producing, um, but until this project sewing report, I've really never had gotten much of a chance to produce the types of things I wanted to produce. I've always loved to talk, obviously. So uh, I thought, you know, since, uh, you know, I'm not a real natural teacher. Like a lot of people that make a living with sewing, they do things like sell patterns or they, you know, teach classes or they design fabric. And I'm not really a designer. I'm, I don't know, I guess if I could come up with a job title for myself, it would be motivational speaker for sewing. If that was like a real job, I would totally rock it. And that's really what this channel is. I want to encourage people and get them excited about sewing. So even though I'm not a professional teacher, I don't have the kind of experience that some of the other um, sewists and seamstresses have here. Um, I, I've got, I make up for it in, th in enthusiasm, I think. So that's why I kind of wanted to start this. I, you know, I had gone to an event called QuiltCon a few years ago and I thought, you know what, maybe I'll bring my camera and I'll try to shoot some stories there. You know, I've got, I can, I can shoot a story and I can produce a story. So I went and did that at QuiltCon and I had a lot of fun doing that. And I thought, you know what, I could do more stuff like this. Um, I've learned a lot of lessons along the way. Um, shooting events for sewing and quilting is difficult. Um, you know, you, Again, I've kind of learned, I, I sort of like more shooting things by myself in my house. I know that sounds a little hermitish, but the logistics are a lot easier. I don't have to worry about, um, you know, permissions and like dealing with the logistics of everything. And also it's a lot more uh, cost effective. Um, going to events obviously is pretty expensive. So at this point, I'm not really at the point where I can just go around to different sewing events and shoot stories there. I wish I could. I think that would be awesome. And in a dream world, I think I would really want to produce some sort of documentary about sewing, but not like the documentaries you have seen. Um, I would want to, like, if I had an endless amount of money and time, I would honestly try to find some people, young people doing very neat things in the sewing industry, and I would do a profile of them. Sort of like a reality show, but not without, like, the weird drama. Um, so that would be pretty cool. I don't know. But uh, yeah, so I started the channel last, uh, Fe I started the channel in February of 2016, and now it's about a year and a half later, and uh, you know, we've got all of you guys, and then a few months ago I thought, you know what, um, when I got access to Facebook Live on mobile, I thought it would be neat to start doing a live show. Um, I think I, you know, I'm one of those people, I feel pretty comfortable with this, with this format, so I thought this was, was cool, and this has actually been really great, so I you know, I think 2017 is definitely the year of live video, whether it be on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snap, you know, I wish Snapchat had live video. That would be really awesome, Snapchat. But I think that's 2017. If you have a business or if you have a social media presence, live video is really something you need to get comfortable with if you want to get into the video space. So I really like doing these live shows and that's, I can't believe I waited this long to learn the open broadcast software. I thought it was going to be really hard and it wasn't. Um, I should have done this months ago. I had the equipment. I just, I don't know why. So I'm sorry guys, but oh, sorry. 
and I just hit the microphone. But um, anyways, uh, Myra, all right, we got Myra, Kate, Sewing Daddy. I used to work on news broadcast as a Chiron operator, graphic artist. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and that job um, can be uh, pretty intense. And the other thing about t working in TV news is that it's truly a very thankless job. Unless you're a reporter and a or an anchor, you really get no community uh you know, like kudos, like, you know, the people on, like, people literally think that the only people who work at the station are the people on air, but for every person you see on air, there's like 10 people that do other stuff. So, Sewing Daddy, I completely uh, hear where you're coming from, and I've worked with many Chiron operators and graphic artists, and the other thing that's happening in the business is that people are doing, like, a lot of different jobs. So, someone, literally, you may talk to an anchor, and then they also... Um, produce the show they shoot their stuff so a lot of these stations you know I don't know it's probably because of money or something but they're just doing a lot more um, they're doing like five people's jobs so if you know someone who works in television news or you encounter someone be kind to them they work very hard they work long hours they work holidays they work really crappy shifts I can I can tell you from experience so it is not a job that's for most people um, Here's one thing. Okay, we've got E. Janes. I stream my sewing on Twitch in the creative section. That's cool. I like that. My husband is on Twitch. I have not, James is on Twitch. I have not spent a lot of time on that because I don't really game. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't played a video game probably since like The Sims in college and I don't even think that probably counts as a video game. Oh, sorry. I keep hitting the microphone and I'm going to stop doing that. Um, I would like to say this. If you are considering, if you, if you're not that interested in starting a YouTube channel, don't start one because you feel like you have to. I think we all have different gifts and we're talented in different areas. And, um, you know, this is the, the area that I feel comfortable in. But I would say if you're not into making videos, don't feel like you need a YouTube channel. I think you should go with whatever medium and form of expression that you feel confident with. And that is your strength. If you have a great voice and you love just talking but you don't like to be seen, maybe podcasting is something you want to do. If you're a great writer, obviously blogging or writing articles. And some of you are very talented photographers, so Instagram is definitely your place because you can put some amazing photos out there. But I do want to say I feel like people, especially in this blogging blogosphere, I feel like people feel like pressured to do everything. And I don't think that's the best strategy. I think you need to stick with the platforms that you think really highlight your strengths and you know because I think you need to go as Gary Vaynerchuk says go all in on your strengths. You know don't worry about the weaknesses. You know don't spend all this money and time trying to fix those. Go after what you are good at. So I will say that you know I don't think everyone I don't think starting a YouTube channel is right for every single person that might be watching this. Um, so Figure out what your gifts are and your strengths and go with that. All right, we've got uh, Melinda. Yeah, I think I would be like live better. With recording videos, you have to pretend people are there. And with live, they really are. Yeah, so that's, I think that's a great point, you know, because with live video, you are talking to actual people in real time. So it's more like having a conversation. So that's why I kind of like doing both. Get, doing the videos gives me that like, you know, I can produce a piece and spend time. It's a little more artsy. Doing live video is just more like, uh, again, it's just having a, like having a conversation with potentially a lot more people. And, uh, but I will say like, if you're very, you, for live stuff, you need to be very talkative because sometimes people may not be leaving you comments. Um, so just be prepared. Um, like with all these shows, I kind of come up with an outline of what I'm gonna talk about ahead of time. Not always, but most, most of the time. And I'm sorry, I keep hitting the microphone, but um, yeah, so find out what your gift is. I don't think, if you're not comfortable on camera and you're not comfortable um, being out there like that, don't feel pressured to start a YouTube channel. Um, so with the starting the YouTube channel, at first I had kind of posted, you know, I didn't really know much about YouTubing and YouTubing is much different than TV. And also I will say, um, I know I, um, I posted some links in the description box and I posted some information. I wrote an, an, a blog post a while ago called Going From Blogging to Vlogging, and I put a lot of tips in there, so if you're interested in checking that out, it is all there. And, uh, you know, but doing YouTube and producing videos takes a lot of time. So I will say that it takes a lot. 
It takes a lot of my time. I probably spend, I probably spend anywhere between 30 and 50 plus hours a week doing, working on something related to YouTubing. Whether it be sewing the project to, you know, shoot the video with. And the other thing is that when you're sewing and you're shooting a project, it takes you like three times as long because not only are you sewing the project, you are having to film yourself doing it. Um, so if I don't like, and also I don't like doing my hair and makeup. Like today I did some makeup, I didn't do the hair. But uh, I've been trying to shoot the videos in a way where um, I'm not seen. So at least then I don't have to worry about doing uh, doing my makeup and doing all that because it takes so much time. And for guys, I'm so jealous because it is a little easier. Um, oh, also in the description box, I've linked all of my YouTube gear. So if you want to check that out, you can. Um, I shoot using two cameras. I use a Canon 70D and a Canon 80D. And we also, my husband James just did a review on this uh, $60 camera he got from Aldi of all places and it's like a GoPro knockoff and I think we're gonna start incorporating that it's more of a wide angle like a you know action camera but it can actually get some pretty cool shots like if I put it um, up against my sewing machine I could get some really close up but still like wide enough shots for you can see stuff of some of the action so I'm definitely gonna be incorporating that into filming oh excuse me but uh, so when I'm shooting, um, at first I was shooting with just the 70D. I also have, um, a, we have several different microphones. We also, the things you don't see, we've got some professional lights. And the one thing I am going to try to upgrade my lighting a little bit more. Um, I've got like one ring light, but I want to incorporate more of some light boxes um, just to more evenly fill out the space. I feel like sometimes the ring light just puts a lot of light on just the subject but then the rest of the background is not, you know, evenly lit. So over time, I, we really want to upgrade some of our equipment. Also, even this web camera right now, um, I think it only goes to 720p and we'd really like to get a 4K webcam. So if you guys keep watching this show and it uh, becomes popular, hopefully we'll be able to get a better camera. But um, I'm really excited this week just to introduce um, some desktop live streaming just because I think the quality is going to be much better particular with the audio and because I can even um, like with this open broadcast software you can even do things like uh, you can throw up some b-roll I can put up some video I shot I can share my computer screen I can share a web browser so things I couldn't do with the iPod I can do with OBS but I think this chat feature is like the best thing ever um, so I'm pretty excited about that so let me know what you think about this new setup. Do you like it? Um, hopefully the audio is like way better because the audio on the iPod was pretty, pretty bad. So anyways, uh, Melinda says we are getting an Aldi soon. Okay, awesome. Um, sewing Daddy, how do you keep a long sewing project interesting for YouTube? Do you show everything or just the highlights? Sewing Daddy, definitely don't show everything. Um, that would take forever. So there's a couple ways you can shoot a project. Um, it, like if I'm doing like a, like say a haul video and I'm just showing fabric, I have one camera be head on so you can see me and it's kind of a medium shot and I've got the other camera that's more of a tighter shot. So it's showing my hands holding fabric or showing my hands holding the pattern. And then, um, I sync them up in my editor. I use Sony Vegas Pro 14 and I uh, will sync up the audio and then I actually record my audio separately. Um, this is all in my, my gear guide list, but we use an H1 recorder and then a lavalier microphone, but it's actually not connected to the camera audio at all. Um, I do have a Rode microphone for the camera, but that's more better, that's better if you're in like a situation where you're outside or there's like multiple people where you can't have everyone mic'd up. So, but the H1 and the lavalier microphone, it's a fairly cost effective way to get decent audio if it's, if you're like a, if it's a talking head video. Um, the setup maybe caught, I think the zoom was only $99 and then the microphone was like 30, I think. So for a microphone that sounds pretty good, the price is pretty reasonable. And the microphone I'm, oh, sorry, sorry guys. The microphone I'm using today, um, for this live stream is actually the blue Yeti blackout edition. And I've got that linked in the description box too. This is an awesome microphone. It's a USB mic and I've got a pop filter on it. And my husband actually uses it for PlayStation of all things. So I had to steal it. He's, um, um, he really likes, uh, I guess he gets a lot of friend requests on PlayStation just for his voice alone. He really prides himself on his voice. And um, 
he's got like the best audio of anybody gaming on PlayStation. So um, you can use this microphone for quite a few things, but the quality is actually pretty, pretty good. Um, like if you're doing podcasting or if you're doing voiceover work for your videos. Um, so, but yeah, so Sewing Daddy, um, so I usually just, if I'm doing a project, I'll shoot different parts of it. Like, so if I'm shooting, like I just shot a free motion, I'm shooting a free motion quilting video and I'm basically just shooting small parts, like chunks. So I'm getting different angles and cause that's the thing, people just need to get the gist of what you're doing. And I've also kind of come to realize that a lot of people watching videos about people making stuff, they're never actually going to make the project. They just kind of want to watch someone making the project. So if you can inspire them and just show them the general idea of what you're doing, I think that'll get them there. Um, I'm really trying to get away from full out tutorials just because, well, one, for one, some reason they really don't, a lot of them don't get that many views. Um, the sewing machine ones do, like if I'm showing how to thread something or whatnot, those do a little bit better. Uh, but like I've spent a lot of time doing step-by-step, -step, you know, really long videos. And for me, they haven't really gotten a ton of views. So I think I'd rather almost do uh, uh, videos in a style that's a little more artsy and showing the making process, but it's not like a step-by-step -step guide of how to do stuff. I've right, got um, another question. How do you fast forward sewing videos? It's going to be different for every editing system you've got. But uh, for Sony Vegas Pro, it's actually really easy. You just hit like control. If, for, if you have Sony Vegas Pro, just hit control and then uh, hit the end of your clip and uh, you can either compress it or stretch it out to make it slow-mo. But um, that's going to vary to whichever editing software you have. And I will say if you are starting out, you do not, if you're starting out and you're not going to do crazy special effects with your videos, I would not spend the money on expensive editing software. If you have a Mac, I would. I think iMovie is totally sufficient for someone starting out for quite a while. If you have a PC, um, I think Adobe Elements has, Adobe has like a more basic um, editing program you can get, I think for like 75, it's definitely under a hundred dollars. But if you, are, if you are not a professional editor or, and you don't have a lot of editing experience, don't drop hundreds of dollars on editing software. Um, the only reason I'm using Sony Vegas Pro 14 is because we got a really good deal on the software. So that's why we went with this. It's decent, but I will say I am very interested in trying out the Adobe Creative Suite just because it's becoming more of an industry standard and because it comes with a lot of other programs like uh, Photoshop and uh, Illustrator. And I'd really like to, over time, I'd actually really like to learn how to use all those programs because I think that that will actually be a very transferable skill. So that subscription is pretty expensive. That one's $49.99 a month. Um, it's subscription based. But I think if, if you have children, if you're if you are a student, a teacher, or you have children, you can actually get it for the first year for $19.99 a month. And then after that, it's uh, that's like a promotional price for the first year. And then after that, it's uh, it's uh, $29.99 a month. So if you have kids or if you are a student or if you are a teacher, that's a really amazing deal. And I would definitely jump on that because that software is real, that it's really good software. It's very, it's a very good suite. And if you can get it for 20 bucks a month, that's an amazing price. So we don't have any kids. Uh, we actually did gift a subscription to my husband's niece. So because she's interested in graphic design, but I really, I really want that suite and that is definitely on my wish list. I might try to see if they have a Black Friday sale and I might consider doing, doing that then. All right, um, got uh, Melinda, Premiere Pro was too much for me. And that's the thing, like if you, if you're just doing basic cuts and you maybe need, want to add some graphics and some music, you don't need, like, you don't need Adobe Premiere Pro. You don't need Final Cut Pro X you can definitely get by using like iMovie or, you know, again, like maybe the, oh, sorry, maybe the Premiere, I think it's called Premiere Elements. Uh, the That's like the Adobe entry level editing. Um, but I would not drop a lot of money on editing software if you don't do a lot of special effects. Um, if you are into that sort of thing, that's when you do, then, then if you want to spend that money, then it, you know, you'll use all the functions. But the, okay, okay, so Adobe Premiere Elements is only $69.99. So that's actually a very good price. 
Um, and actually that would get you into the ballpark for Adobe, you know, just to get your feet wet with Adobe. But, you know, if you want to learn more about editing and you're really serious about it, then, you know, invest the time and money into learning how to edit. And again, I've been editing for a long time. So for me, there was really no learning curve there. Um, most professional editing software is, they have similar enough interfaces where you can kind of jump from one to another. And there was not a huge learning curve. They're not completely different. They all have the same basic functions. But when you do get to the Adobe Premiere Pro or like uh, Sony Vegas Pro or, or, you know, Final Cut Pro X, they have some really more in-depth features, but a lot of people never utilize them. In fact, I don't even use a lot of the functions for Sony Vegas, although they do have a pretty okay multi-camera editing function, so I do like doing that. But anyways, um, I've been talking a lot about editing. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will definitely try my best to answer. All right, so we've got a, iMovie is awesome. Windows users definitely get the short of the end of the stick there. Windows Movie Maker is terrible. And uh, yeah, Jen, I have not tried Windows Movie Maker, um, but yeah, I've used iMovie and I think iMovie is a really, especially for it being like, for, for being a, basically a free software when you purchase it, I think iMovie is amazing. Um, so I've even tried to edit some videos. I, I think I edited one video for Sony Report on my phone just to see what that was like. And uh, the editing, you know, it's very easy to use. So if you do have a Mac, you know, use iMovie to do your videos. You don't need anything crazier than that. Um, but yeah, so I do, so let's get, let's talk more about the production schedule. I, I do one video a week where it's um, something I upload and then I do one live show on Sunday, which is what you're watching now. Um, and I will show you, I keep a calendar of all of my projects. So I plan out my videos ahead and then I keep this calendar to show like how I, how I, um, you know, what day I'm going to drop a video, what the next week's live show topic is going to be. And then I also even write down every day what I worked on, just so I have a record from the past of what, what I did. Like, um, on this one I did, I, so on Jul on June 4th, I did the live show about things I like, and then I also taped a serger and cover stitch threading videos. So this gives me, you know, I like paper calendars um, for whatever reason. So this gives me a record of what I was working on. And then I also have a constant list of like video ideas that I need to shoot or videos that I plan to shoot and also videos I've got shot that I need to edit. I usually try to stay a couple weeks ahead of the game just because I, I don't like to, I don't like the week to be coming up and for me not to have a video already shot and edited just because, you know, you never know what can come up. And one thing about YouTube, and I mentioned this in my blog post, you really need to be, YouTube really rewards consistency. So you uploading the same week, the same day, same time, really helps YouTube know, hey, this person really uploads regularly. Um, and there's a really complicated YouTube algorithm. There's some videos on it. I'm not an expert on it. Uh, but in my blogging to vlogging post, I did link to a guy named Daryl Eves on YouTube. And he's a YouTube expert and consultant. And he has a lot of videos about really what, you know, how does YouTube decide how to rank videos, which is like if you type in sewing, what are the first results that pop up? He also has videos about um, how important the thumbnail is. Your thumbnails should all generally have the same kind of look. And also, you know, what does YouTube take into account? Because YouTube is, you've, if you notice from YouTube, YouTube suggests videos for you. Like if you go to the homepage, they've got a bunch of videos that they think you'll like. And uh, a lot of my videos, uh, the views come from uh, recommended videos, not even from search or not even from subscribers. So that's a really important thing to keep in mind is that, um, you know, I've, I, and I've even taken a class on YouTube and it's called Video Ranking Academy and it's run by a guy named Sean Cannell. Um, I have gotten a lot of value out of it and I've learned quite a bit in there. Um, and I've recommended several of Sean's videos in my blog post. He has a channel called Video Influencers and that is actually for, um, P it's actually a channel that gives YouTube tips and strategy. So that's a channel that I would recommend if you are interested in YouTubing. The other um, person I'd recommend, um, she's also linked in my blog post, Sunny Leonarduzzi. She has a lot of really good basic videos like how to get comfortable on camera, 
how to do basic editing. So, um, you know, and a lot of things like how to, you know, like even like how to be more success, you know, how to help your YouTube strategy, like how to do Snapchat stuff. So she has a lot of social media tutorials that are really helpful, especially if there's some things you're not comfortable with. Um, okay, so we've got, all right, uh, Melinda again, my computer, my husband bought me a gaming laptop, but really wanted a Mac, so he can't work on those. So no go. Oh, no. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that. But yeah, so yeah, I, I don't have a lot of experience with Movie Maker, but uh, all right, from, from what Jen says, apparently it's not not very good. Um, but I have been happy with Sony Vegas Pro. Um, Sony was bought out by a company called Magix, though. So Sony doesn't really own that part anymore. So we actually got a really good deal on the upgrade. We started out with Sony Vegas Pro 12, but we got a really awesome deal on the upgrade. So that's why we're using Sony Vegas Pro. And I don't have a lot of complaints with it. You know, editing is editing. Um, but I do think the Adobe has a lot more options. Um, plus, I would really like to learn how to use Illustrator and Photoshop. So that would be pretty cool. So maybe, maybe that's something we will. And I think it even comes with After Effects, I want to say, which, which is pretty awesome. So if you are interested in doing more special effects and getting more serious about editing, um, I would definitely look into that Adobe Creative Suite. And if you have kids, you're a student or you're a teacher, you're going to get an awesome deal on it. Um, so yes, I post once a week on Thursdays. I usually try to post around noon Eastern time. Obviously, the live show is Sundays at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that's a schedule that I feel comfortable with for now because, again, the live show doesn't require me doing any editing. But I'm really excited for to do this on the desktop because I can put my thumbnail in beforehand. I can put all of my information, all my tags in there. And uh, also it's a little, you know, I just really like this. This is so much better. I can't believe I didn't do this before now. I feel, I feel kind of dumb for waiting so long to do this. But we're here now and uh, moving forward, all the videos will be uh, in my bedroom of hopefully of this quality. And maybe in the future we will get a better a web camera. Um, oh, but yeah, so let's talk more about uh, just the, the YouTube production. Um, I would say each video, the time to shoot, it, it varies greatly. Um, some videos may take me 15 minutes to shoot. Other videos take me days. Like the one I'm working on now has taken me several weeks of just different parts of the process. It's more of a showing the process of what I'm making video. Um, and I also really try to do different, I don't, like I know there's a lot of vloggers out there that do the same, you know, it might be them in their bedroom and they're talking about stuff and showing stuff that they make. Um, but as a, as a producer and as a creative artist, I really want to push myself to do a lot of different things. So I try to mix up the formats. You know, I might have a haul video, I might have a review. Um, I like to do some demonstration products, unboxings. Um, I have a few funny videos. I really like making funny videos about sewing because I haven't really seen a lot out there. So um, I hope to, you know, those are pretty time consuming with the production and with the editing. Um, I did one around Christmas that kind of tank. And that's, the, here's the other thing about YouTubing is that, um, videos that you think are going to do really well may totally bomb and then videos that you're you kind of don't really care about and you only spent like a couple like hours working on they may blow up with views like you don't though that's the weird thing is you don't know what people are really gonna go for and that's sort of the interesting thing about youtube is that the marketplace is really deciding what they want to watch so i think that's what i like about youtube and also what's kind of challenging about youtube is that you don't know you know, my most popular video is the video that I talked about making my handmade wardrobe and not buying clothes this year. And that did not take me very long to shoot. It's just me sitting there and I closed a couple pic I put a couple pictures in there. But that was the crazy thing. But yet, like the video I made, I spent about a month working on and it was uh, like it was sort of supposed to be a, like a spoof about the, sh the movie Best in Show about the dog show. And that video really didn't do very well with views, but I spent so much time on it. Um, so that's the thing, like sometimes you may have videos that you work really hard on that don't get the response that you may hoped for. And then sometimes you have videos that you're like, wow, how is that doing so well? Um, but I spend a lot of time doing these videos. Um, I spend a lot of time shooting them. I spend a lot more time editing. If I'm spending 30 minutes shooting a video, it may take me eight, to 20 hours to edit these videos depending on the complexity of the production they can take a really long time for me to edit and I'm a pretty quick editor 
So they're just, you know, I just really um, want them to be the best they can be. So that's why I spend so much time editing the videos. Um, certain ones, and I kind of try to mix them up. Like, so if I'm doing a really complicated video one week, um, I kind of want to surround them with videos that are easier to produce just so that I'm not totally bogged down and I can handle the workload. Um, I spend a lot of time taking photos for the thumbnails and photos for social media. So while I'm shooting the video, I also have to keep in mind, hey, what kind of pictures do I want to use for Instagram? What kind of photo, oh, sorry, what do I want to use for the thumbnail? So you also have to think when you're shooting the video, what's going to be my thumbnail? And also what, I, what am I going to put up on Instagram? So you can do all those things at one time. I also batch shoot. So if I'm shooting, I shot like four videos at a time a couple weeks ago. I was on vacation, so I had more time to shoot. And I also find that when I shoot, when I have an extended period of time off, it helps because editing I can kind of jump into like after work or before work, but shooting the video and like sewing the project really takes a day to dedicate. Like I, oh, sorry. I, I just have a, personally have a hard time shooting videos before work or, you know, really jumping into a sewing project when I know I have to be at work or when I've just gotten home. So I, if I have a day off, I will definitely batch shoot and shoot several videos at once. I've already got my hair done. I've already got makeup done. You can change your clothes. So those are things you can do to make your production schedule a little bit easier. Uh, but it is a lot of work. I basically have no life outside of this and work. Um, I have no kids. I don't have any external, res a lot of external responsibilities. So if you do just know that this, um, this is very time consuming. Um, if you're just doing it for fun and you don't really care, you know what, and you want to start a channel and just do it every once in a while, you can, but just know that, um, if you really want to grow on YouTube and you really want to get, um, get a larger audience and, you know, actually make money on the channel, you, you will have to put in a lot. It requires a lot of time. And I'm not saying that lightly. It requires a lot of time, um, like you really need to treat it as a, as a job. Um, and this is again, just a hop, like a hobby. But again, I take it as seriously as a job. I do this all the time. I'm always, I'm usually always thinking about it. And it's something that, you know, I take very seriously because I really want to grow this channel. So, it, but again, if you're, if you don't really, if that's not really your goal and you just kind of want to do it to every once in a while put a video up, you know, that is fine. But if you do want to hope that this can be something bigger. Um, just know that it is a very large time commitment and I would also really recommend investing the time and money into learning how to do things. If you don't know how to shoot videos, you know, look up tutorials, take classes about how to shoot video. Shooting video is a lot different than shooting photos. You have a lot more working parts to it. You also have to know storytelling. Um, you know, like that's the, and that's one thing that takes a really long time to develop is what's your storytelling style and how are you going to tell a story in every single one of your videos? That's something that again, you know, you, that's not something that you're going to pick up from some, you know, YouTube video you found online. That's something that, you know, and honestly your first maybe 30 to 50 videos, some of them aren't going to be very good. You're like, I only started becoming kind of happy with the quality of my videos after maybe video fifth, the 50th one. I've got over a hundred videos on the channel, um, including the live streams. And up until a few months ago, that's when I really started to kind of like where I was going with things. The earlier videos, again, you know, and, and that's something that you need to be okay with is knowing that the first videos you put out, they're not going to be your best videos, but don't, I mean, don't take them down because that kind of shows people that you're growing and you're becoming a better filmmaker. But, uh, just know that the first ones, um, and also don't, I would also recommend don't, don't think everything has to be perfect to post because you're never going to end up posting a video. So if you're, if you're one of those people that's like, oh, everything has to be absolutely right and absolutely perfect. And you know, and you're, you're not going to be satisfied with any anything else then you're never actually going to be, be able to execute this because there is a saying in television is make air not art and that is true the, the important thing is to keep uploading videos it's not to have the best video i've ever made in my entire life it's to post video and again you don't want your videos to be crappy but at the same time there's always going to be none of your videos are going to be a hundred percent there they might get 95% of the way there, but there's always going to be something you could have done to make the video a little bit better. 
but you have to be satisfied with the video that you upload. So that's what I have to say about that. Um, all right, we've got uh, Myra, how do you make sure the video instructional content is correct? Um, I try to do as much research as I can beforehand, um, but again, I'm not a professional sewing instructor. Um, I do try to do my homework beforehand, um, but I will say, you know, like say, hey, I'm not an expert, but here's what I did that worked for me. And I try to share tips and um, things that I've worked with my sewing machines that, um, you know, have worked out the best for me. But here's the other thing, Myra, is that everyone has a different way of doing things. And yes, you may get a comment every once in a while like, oh, I would have done it this other way. Or, you know, you didn't do that right. You know what? Those people are always going to be there. And here's the thing that I have to say about the folks that make comments like that on YouTube channels. Instead of leaving the person a negative comment about the video, go out and create something yourself. And that kind of bums me out. And I've heard a lot of other YouTubers and folks talk about this is that by you tearing someone else down and saying something negative about them, that's not constructive and that's just kind of kind of mean or like sort of like condescending. I think that's just sort of a, I don't know, sort of a crappy thing to do. So if instead of doing that, why not, why not create your own video on it? If you think that you have a better way, you make a video about it. And, but that's the thing, if you're not willing to put your money where your mouth is, then you know what? Just, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. But, the, you know, again, you're gonna get every channel, especially the larger you get, you're gonna get people leaving you negative comments um, or maybe questioning your technique. And in fact, um, that podcast I recommended a while back, the Making It podcast, those guys are all YouTubers and they deal with that all the time. Like they'll make a woodworking project and someone will be like, Oh, well, you know what? I wish you wouldn't have used the CNC machine because not everyone has one. Or, you know what? You're holding the hammer the wrong way. You know what? This person is creating content for free for an audience to try to inspire and help people. So I think that you're coming at it the wrong way. Don't worry to death that, that, your, that your instructions might be wrong. Do the best you can. And if you're putting that out there in good faith, then you know what? You did the best you could with the information you had. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, obviously, I before I try to make a video about um, an instruction with some instructions or with tips, I try to make sure I've got got it down. Um, like before I made any cover stitch videos, machine videos, I spent hours and hours um, playing around with the machine, changing the settings, testing different things out. So that's the other thing that's time consuming about doing a sewing channel. Um, that's different from maybe beauty vlogs or fashion vloggers is that we actually have to make things. Um, people who are doing fashion vlogs just put on an out, they, they're putting on an outfit or they're putting on makeup, trying it out. But we actually have to go through the making process. So our videos are exponentially more difficult to produce than someone that's just using something or consuming something because we're actually having to make it. Um, but yeah. So that is uh, my thoughts about internet trolls. I'm not really a fan, you know, but again, they're always gonna, they're always gonna be out there and just know that no matter what you do, um, you could always get someone saying you're doing something wrong or that, you know, they would have done something different or, you know, making suggestions on what you should have done. But you know what? The video is already out there. You can't take it back. And uh, if they disagree with you that much, um, I would challenge them to make their own video. And then usually those people, when you go to their profiles, they don't make videos like they've got some liked videos or they've got some like low quality cell phone videos of their grandchildren or something, but they don't actually make videos on a regular basis. So when I, when I see people like that, I kind of don't take them too seriously because you know what, they're not, they're not creating and they're not part of this maker community like we are. So yeah, again, if you have any questions about YouTube, let me know. Um, if you're just joining us, I'm Jennifer Moore, and we are talking all about what it's like having a YouTube channel, some of the realities about YouTube, and I, you can scroll back to the beginning. I talked about how I started the channel, but let me know if you have any questions at all, and I'll try to answer them. Um, I will talk about money. Um, if you are doing, okay, oh, we've got another question. Sewing Daddy, do you have any tips on idea generations for your videos? Uh, that's a good question. I... You know, pretty much with the, with the projects videos, I just, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to make this um, pretty much just any sewing project I'm doing. I think, how could I make this a video? 
And also you have to think, how does it bring value to your, how does it bring value to your audience? Um, I know I see a lot of sewing vloggers who they do like makes videos and they show, um, they're just show, they, they show and they model things that they make. And Champagne Twist a few weeks ago had a good comment was, which was that a lot of these channels are kind of turning into like fat, you know, just like runway type shows. Um, but I've been trying to really think of ways, even when I'm showing off a make, um, how can I bring value? I am like the video I just shot is, which is actually about this shirt. Um, I talk about what I would have done differently. And I also took some B-roll or footage of some of the process so you could see what I was doing. So think about that when you're doing a sewing project, you know, how could it bring, not, not just show and tell, but how can you bring value to other people sewing? You know, how could you make it helpful? If you're doing a pattern review, share some tips for what you did. Um, like I actually, I'm going to shoot a video. I discovered a, um, an easier way to do a narrow hem. So I was thinking about doing a video about that. So pretty much anything I come across that I'm like, Hey, you know what? I, you know, this is a cool way to do things, or this is an easier way to do things. I think this would make a great video. Um, as far as the funny videos go, I have a really like weird sense of humor. So I, uh, I'm often thinking like, hey, that would be kind of hilarious. And then like um, a while ago I shot, this was from our other channel, More Approved. I shot a humor video where I test drove a uh, children's motorized car called the Disney Princess Carriage. And um, I, the idea came, like I was talking to someone about it. I was like, that'd be cool. And she's like, you know what? Screw the kids, I want one for me. And I was like, you know, it would be a funny video to show an adult like driving the car around like it's like an actual car. So I did a video about that. Um, that obviously was a bit of a cost investment there. Plus it was kind of weird because I don't have kids, but you know, even if you think you have an idea and you think, hey, that's kind of out there, go ahead and do it because you never know who might find it entertaining, who might find it enjoyable to watch. So I also think, I, I think when you're creating YouTube content, you want to make sure that it's, um, I think if it hits these three markers, it's educational entertaining and engaging that is a sign of a good a good video um i know a lot of people are also like how do you get a viral video and i think that's just a very difficult um barrel to dive into um because getting a viral video now like is like hitting the lottery so i wouldn't don't even necessarily go for viral videos but just go for videos that over time people will find helpful like when I made the uh, Brother Serger video, I was like, you know, there are some Brother Serger threading videos out there, but, um, you know, I think I can, you know, up the production quality and offer a video that is very good quality. Because if you've seen a lot of videos on YouTube, some of them were made several years ago, you know, you might have a hard time seeing something or you may think, hey, you know what, if you are thinking, hey, you know what, I could probably make a video that's a little bit better. Go ahead and make a video that's better. You know, you're offering marketplace competition and also for people who are getting into sewing, they need all the resources they can get. So if you do do technique videos or you have a lot of knowledge, you know, why not share that through a video? So I, yeah, so there's a lot of ways to come up with videos. Um, I also think um, if, if I try a product and I'm like, oh my gosh, this product is awesome. This ruler is great. Or, um, you know, this glue stick is really cool for quilting. I will, I've been thinking about more product reviews to do just to share. And I'm very, if you, if you've seen the review videos, I'm pretty, I keep, try to keep it pretty honest. Um, I actually am not really that interested in doing like a lot of sponsored stuff or a lot of stuff that's like, that someone pays you to do just because I think at that point that does, I think that does really affect the, the editorial content of your video. So I personally prefer to buy stuff on my own and try it out, especially if it's something like inexpensive because, um, you know. I don't know. I just, I just think I like the authenticity of you buying the product with your own money and, and doing it that way. Um, not to say that I won't rule out, rule out partnerships in the future, but I do think, um, when you, you know, and I know we've all seen it when you see a sponsored blog post, you kind of roll your eyes and you're like, Oh, not another one of these. Um, and I think there are very few people who pull off the sponsored posts in a way that's more organic. Um, personally, I'm kind of turned off by sponsored blog posts. I'll be, I'll be frank about it. Um, if I see it's sponsored and I, you know, like they don't, and especially if they don't say anything negative about the product, you're like, eh, I don't know. So anyways, I'm, you know, if you do sponsored blog posts, you know, I don't have anything against you, but I personally, as a reader or as a consumer of content, I, you know, tend to like the, I tend to more go for posts or videos that, um, 
that where the person is really just speaking from their own completely objective opinion. All right, we've got, all right, Jenny, I've, yeah, we've got Kate, ignore the trolls. Jenny, I've done a lot of makeup tutorials, not video though, and I like to ask people what they want to learn and then show them multiple ways to do something and examples of right and wrong to compare. I think that's a good way to do things, Jenny, you know, and you know, if you want to do makeup tutorials, do makeup tutorials. And here's the other thing I will say is um, if you are going to do a YouTube channel or even any sort of blog or social media pre presence, you want to build your personal brand, you need to, st one, stick with your strengths and also um, come up with something that's unique about you. Um, like say, you know, Jennifer, she say she wants to do a YouTube channel about beauty. There's a lot of beauty vloggers out there. There is a lot of competition. So you need to kind of think away what sets me apart, what would make this channel different than the others. Don't copy other channels. Don't say, hey, I've got to do it the same way as Desi Perkins, you know, or Toddy from Glam Life Guru. Guru. You know, you do you and that's what's different about you. That's the only differentiating factor you have about yourself is that you are your own person. Um, you know, if you notice, my channel is a lot different than the other sewing channels because this is this is me. This is my personality. This is who I am. This is the kind of content I like to produce. Um, and it is a little bit different. Um, but you know what? I felt like, the, you know, I needed to, to do what I did and not do what everyone else is necessarily doing in the same way. Um, I think we can be inspired by other people and inspired by other channels, but at the same time, um, don't be afraid to do something different because that is that could be the thing that makes you successful. Uh, Sylvia, are there any legal ramifications uh, with YouTube? Let's say your technique accidentally makes someone cut their finger badly. Well, Sylvia, you can always put a... Um, a disclaimer and there's some examples all over the internet um like just saying hey you know this this video and basically my we've got a few on some of our more approved videos basically you know this video is for entertainment purposes only you know be sure to you know like blah 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 that sort of like legalese again i am not an attorney so if you are worried about that sort of thing i would definitely do some some research and again i don't tout myself as a sewing expert i just say hey, this is this is how you thread it um but again, and also there's some common sense involved. It is a sewing machine. There is a needle involved. Um, you could injure yourself, but if you do want to protect yourself, you can add a disclaimer that the, these videos and this content is for entertainment purposes only. Um, even shows like the, if you look closely, even shows like the Dave Ramsey show say stuff like that. Um, you know, this is for entertainment purposes only. You know, make sure to consult a professional before making any decisions. You know, also if you offer like health tips or something, you would do the same thing. So, but again, um, I, you know, and again, I'm not an attorney, but that's what you can do if you are concerned about that or if you want to make sure you've got that added protection. Um, you know, again, my videos are pretty, I think my videos are fairly like, uh, you know, innocuous, you know, like I'm unboxing stuff or whatever. But, you know, like um, if I was showing people, like I've seen, um, YouTube videos, DIY braces, that would be one that might have some uh, some legal liability there or like things like weight loss or anything else like that. Um, so there again, here's the thing though, um, Sylvia, I wouldn't let that stop you from creating YouTube content or trying to put something out there. Again, there's always going to be people that are very litigious. Um, they're everywhere. You can't avoid them, but at the same time, don't let that be what stands in the way between you and putting something out there in the world. And we've got a J. Mary Lestone. I think your name is Mary, right? I think it's just Mary, correct? Let me know if I'm wrong on that. But uh, anyways, so that is, uh, yeah. So we're, we're just chatting. It's about four o'clock. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the YouTube channel, let me know. Um, I will take this time. We'll talk a little bit, a bit about money. Um, if you're wondering, no, I do not make a living from YouTube. Um, I'm not making, I'm not some sort of baller. I am not making stacks of cash from doing a YouTube channel at all. Um, if you, you know, again, I, I appreciate the folks uh, that, um, you know, link on my, some of my Amazon links or my affiliate links and shop there. It's much appreciated. Um, at this point, as far as money goes, um, again, the AdSense revenue you get off of YouTube is, is pretty low and earlier this year there was something called the adpocalypse where a lot of advertisers had pulled out of YouTube due to some um, you know extremist terrorist type videos or like PewDiePie 
but uh, okay so we got Jay Mary okay cool Mary is your first name hello Mary and um but yeah, so the, the, the ad revenue you get from YouTube, unless you have like a million subscribers and you've got boatloads of views and uh, watch time, um, the ad revenue probably is not going to be enough to support yourself um, without additional sources of revenue. At this point, I'm at the point with the channel where it doesn't cost me anything to run. Um, the money that comes in from the ads and then the affiliate program, like the Amazon affiliate program, covers the cost of like... Uh, you know, some of my, like I pay for a web server from DreamHost every month and it also covers some of the costs of like supplies. Like, um, like of course, if you're buying, you know, if you're, if I'm making like a bathing suit or something, which is something I would like to do, um, it, you know, it costs money to buy like the materials and to buy the fabric. So at least at this point, um, the channel pretty much covers like my web hosting services and it also covers the cost of some of, some of the supplies. Um, so at least it's not costing me money, but again, I would, if I was really in it for the money, I could make more money getting a part-time job as a pizza delivery person. Um, so obviously I'm not doing this for money and a lot of the YouTubers out there are also not doing it for money. In, the, in fact, even if you see someone that appears to have a large audience, um, chances are they, they probably have a real job too. There's a YouTuber I follow named Leanne Says and she has a real job. And she has over, I think, five, she has over 500,000 subscribers and I've been following her for a long time. But even someone like that is not doing YouTube full time. Again, there are other ways to make money. Like if you do get like a, a partnership or a brand deal, you work with brands. Um, there's also affiliate programs. So there are other ways you can make revenue. Um, but again, like, like sort of like how a lot of people cobble out of living in this industry. They may teach sewing. They may... Um, sell things every once in a while they may you know do a lot of things to kind of that cobbled together equals one income and if you're interested in that um definitely check out that making it podcast i recommend those guys they're um very pretty successful youtubers but they also do other things like they've got the podcast the one guy sells plans for woodworking so if you are interested in doing youtube full-time um just know that you you do kind of need a, a fairly sizable audience um, and some other ways of generating income. I know uh, Patreon is becoming a popular thing to do for vloggers. Um, at this point, I'm not real, I don't know, I'm just not, that's just not something I'm doing right now. Um, I, you know, because I don't know, like it just, it seems like everyone out there is asking for money. Like there's all these subscription services, like, you know, everyone's asking like, hey, for $7.99 a month or for $8 a month, you know, do this, consume this content. And I'm kind of cheap, so I personally don't pay a lot of that sort of thing. Uh, the only thing I really pay monthly is a Netflix account. Um, and even my cell phone, my cell phone is uh, $23 a month. Um, I've got a Republic wireless phone. It runs on Wi-Fi and I'm too cheap to get anything else. Uh, between my husband and I, our cell phone bill is like 50 bucks a month. And uh, I, again, I don't want to, I really just don't want to pay more than that for a cell phone. So if I'm not willing to pay that sort of thing, I don't know why I would ask you to do that either. Um, so anyways, that's a, you know, I don't, I mean, I'm not going to say never, you know, I know a lot of people are doing Patreon, but at this point, um, I don't really see myself doing it right now. Um, I think ideally if like if this show took off I think I would be okay with maybe having sponsors of the show but to the point where they wouldn't influence the editorial content like where it was like say it was sponsored by Colgate toothpaste and Colgate toothpaste had a slate up at the beginning or the end you know again at least you would know at that point that that was clearly an ad and it wouldn't affect what I was talking about um, so that's the those are the kind of things that I think about that where um, I would, it would make this more feasible, but at the same time where it wouldn't affect what I was doing. Um, I don't want other people to call the shots about this content. Um, so that's why I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, if someone wants to send me like something for free, like I've gotten a few of those unboxing things. Someone said, Hey, I will send it to you, but they didn't tell me what to say. They didn't, um, give me any, you know, messaging I had to say. They just said, Hey, you know, try this out. So I'm okay with those sort of arrangements just because no one's telling you what to do. And also I wasn't compensated for it. Um, I got some free product, but they didn't pay me to say anything. They didn't pay me to do anything. 
they just sent it to me for me to review and that's what I did um so I, I'm comfortable with things like that but uh at this point I really kind of want to just keep it keep it more organic and more authentic and that is the way that I feel comfortable with um so yeah we've got all right we got Mary I do it for fun and show my daughter in Kentucky my recipes and I don't have Facebook so I use YouTube to show family all over the world what we are doing and I think that's what I love about YouTube is that you can use it to there's videos on so much stuff if you want to learn how to do anything you can just go to YouTube and it's there um, but yeah, so, and, and we also have all of our chat up there. So if you want to see someone's comments, now you can see it in the video and it will be saved forever. So um, just make sure guys don't put any obscene language in there because that will be in the video now. But other than that, it will be cool. Uh, Sewing Daddy, have you considered producing your own paid online courses? Um, Sewing Daddy, I have not. Um, I, I don't mind sharing my knowledge about production, but at the same time, there are so many other people with course. It seems, and that's the other thing. Everywhere you look, someone, some blogger has a course or an e-course or an e-book. And I'm like, I'm like, I don't even, I don't know. It just seems like it's getting, we're getting a little saturated with people offering classes. I don't feel like I need to be another person doing that. Um, so I don't have any plans to produce my own courses. Um, so, but I know if you are interested in that, I know there are a lot of, courses out there for you to learn uh, video production um, the other thing you can do if you want to learn video production just do some research a lot of the information is out there for free you can go to YouTube and you can look up like if I'm look like um I, a while ago I wanted to learn how to blur parts of video so I just looked up on YouTube how to blur you know how to create blurring effect in Sony Vegas and it popped up um, in fact to learn how to use the software I'm using now I learned I googled you know how to use OBS for YouTube Live, and it popped up. Um, in fact, a lot of the things I'm doing today, I learned for free yesterday on YouTube. So if you wanna learn how to do things, the information is there, someone's put it out there, and that's why I appreciate YouTube so much. Jennifer, it is. it was storming in Atlanta earlier, but it is okay now, so I think James might actually mow the lawn. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, hoping that happens, because um, up until like 10 minutes before the show started, he was editing a video, and uh, then after that, he was going outside to see if it was dry enough to mow the lawn. The weather here is kind of crazy. It's uh, been raining a lot. Um, in fact, the weather's been kind of crazy all over the place. Like it was, it's been raining in like Arizona and then California has all those crazy fires. So, uh, oh, um, sewing daddy, sewing courses that are more detailed. Sewing daddy, I, um, I am not a sewing teacher. I will occasionally show, and in fact, I'm even kind of trying to get away from tutorial videos just because I don't personally feel like I'm the person that needs to put that content out there I think there are people that are would be much better than me at it um I feel again I feel like myself I if I could define a role for myself it would be sewing motivational speaker I think that is something that I'm good at and something that I I'm capable of um but I think that as far as the sewing classes I I don't have any plans to do any sewing courses that are more detailed although as i get more into dressmaking and garment sewing um i've discovered some tips that i think that would be helpful so i'm definitely going to be sharing tips with people on my projects but i i personally am not going to be doing like a sewing some sewing classes or anything like that um it's just not something i don't i don't feel competent enough in my own skills to be able to to teach people especially more advanced stuff um, I was thinking, though, I would like to get more involved with the community in person. And I've been kind of thinking about ways to do that. Um, like, I've noticed there's a Maker Fair in Atlanta later this year. So I was thinking about maybe um, seeing what's involved in setting up a booth. And maybe I could just do a demo booth in where I'm sewing. Just to get people to know about sewing and maybe giving out some stuff at the booth. Um, the other thing I was thinking, if I had more time, I would definitely be interested in... Um, teaching like more one-on-one -on -one or like two-on-one -on -one in-person classes with a very small amount of people but very basic stuff like how to use a sewing machine super basic stuff like that's something that I could teach and I think that's something that's needed is more stuff that's real basic because people have no idea how to use a sewing machine um sewing daddy that is awesome I like your video content plan and Mary says Arkansas is ready to have some storms it is hot um, so anyways, yeah, guys, ask me some YouTube questions. Oh, and I wanted to share something with you, and thank you, guys. Um, last week, I got invited to 
a YouTube content creator day that's here in the area. So I got an invite like on your little YouTube dashboard and it's like an in-person event, like it's for real, where you go and spend the day with people from YouTube and I guess they teach you more how about um, how to run your channel better. So I'm really excited about it and I was so pumped to get the invitation. Uh, I guess you have to have over a thousand subscribers to be eligible and it does look like they kind of go through channels and pick people. And I guess they saw that I have, um, like live in the area so I got the invite so when I get back um I it's on August 19th the day afterwards I actually have to work on that Sunday so I'm going to move the show up a little earlier but I'm going to do a live stream talking about what happened at YouTube Creator Day but I wanted to thank you guys because I wouldn't be going if it wasn't for all of you so that's something that I just want to say thank you so much because I'm really I'm so jazzed for the chance to learn from actual people from YouTube and just see what that's all about so I'm excited to meet some cool people and uh, I'm and also you're allowed to vlog there. So at the event, I'm also going to try to tape a vlog just so you can see what it's like at Creator Day. Like it's like you're there with me. So we got anyways, thank you very much. And uh, so the show on the 20th is going to be at 1 p.m. instead of 3 p.m. just because I have to work later. And I'm going to be talking all about my experience at Creator Day. So uh, thank you again, because I, I realized that, you know, I need, you know, in order to go to those things and to get invited, you need to actually have an audience and that is you guys. So thank you again so much from the bottom of my heart. Got Mary, you've got a great eye for colors. I can't pick colors for nothing and enjoy your color tips. Oh, thank you so much. I do really like picking out fabrics. Um, so that is something I enjoy. I like putting things together. I'm really, the weird thing is I'm really bad with it in a home decor sense. Like I can pick out fabrics for projects, but I cannot pick a paint chip to save my life. Like the paint chip that I see never looks the same on the wall. So in some areas I'm okay with color, in other areas not so much. All right, we've got Doherty, uh, thank you, Jennifer. And we've got Kate, thank you for walking us through this YouTube production tips. Although I do not plan to make YouTube videos, I have a deeper, greater appreciation for YouTube production. Kate, yes, it is uh, a lot of hard work and you really have to enjoy it. Um, that's the thing I would tell you if you're trying to get into YouTube is that um, you need to think about like again if you're going to do it on a more serious level um, it's it is a lot of work um, it's also a lot of learning um, I've learned to do things over the last year that I had no idea how to do and YouTube is even a lot different than someone with me with a traditional media background it is a lot different um, so even if you're a blogger even if you're a photographer just know that doing YouTube is a completely different thing um, so I think a lot of people go into it with the assumption, oh, hey, you know, I'm a blogger. I can I can make these videos. Making videos is no joke. The, the amount of time for production is insane, especially if you do videos with a higher production level and you use multiple cameras and you're incorporating different audios. Um, I, you know, but again, oh, and the other thing I wanted to share with you is YouTube has a lot of free resources. Um, they have a, if you're a YouTube partner, which is very easy to do, you just have to, you know, turn on all your, enable all your settings on your YouTube channel. They've got a YouTube Creator Academy. So they've got videos um, from YouTubers on how to YouTube. There's so much out there. And if you go to the create section of your dashboard, you can get, there's tons of free music you can use and also free sound effects. Um, I would definitely recommend using those. Um, do not ever, uh, if you are making videos, don't ever use copyrighted music or like copyrighted material like clips from movies or TV shows. Um, you can get your video demonetized and also you can get a copyright strike. So if you've noticed why I typically don't use a lot of that sort of stuff in my videos, um, I mostly use stuff I've shot or stuff I've gotten permission to use is because of copyright law. So um, that's why the music, you know, and you may have heard it. A lot of YouTubers use the same free music. So you're like, oh, I've heard this song before. And you're like, it's because it's from the YouTube library. But the YouTube library is great. They've got all different kinds of genres of music. So um, I use a lot of those free resources. Um, and again, it's all free. YouTube is free. And this open broadcasting software is free. So um, that's the cool thing about YouTubing is that there's so much out there for creators. I mean... If I wanted to broadcast this show 20 years ago, I would need millions of dollars of equipment. And now all I need is like a web camera and a microphone or a phone or an iPod. And you can really do a lot of things w uh, with very little overhead for free. 
So that's what I love about platforms like this is that it allows, it really takes away the barriers of entry for people wanting to create content. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this live stream. If you have any further videos about YouTube, feel free to ask. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the blog post I wrote a while ago. Um, from blogging to vlogging, I shared a, a lot of tips in there. And also you can see all the gear I use. Um, and I talk a little bit more. And also I shared a lot of really helpful videos for people who are just getting started with YouTube. Um, like the video influencers channel is great. They've got videos, how to come up with your channel niche, how to come up with titles. Um, what should you do before posting videos? Um, Cause there's a lot, there's a lot to do. So it's a lot of fun and, uh, oh, um, Sewing Daddy, do you record by yourself or do you have someone else run the camera to do the composition or focus? Um, Sewing Daddy, I've done both. I can definitely shoot by myself using two cameras because both of the Canons have flip out screens so you can see um, the shot, which is good. And also it's got autofocus. The autofocus isn't perfect, but it's decent enough where if you're not moving around a crazy amount, you can, uh, you know, it, you can do it. Um, for the close-up shots too, you can also um, do manual focus so you can focus it on your shot so that if your hands are in there, um, it stays focused on like say the sewing machine needle. Um, I do occasionally, James will occasionally help me shoot, but um, honestly, I can do it by myself and it's really not much of a problem. Um, you just need to have some tripod set up. Um, I've got all the lighting set up. So really, for the most part, um, he has helped me shoot and edit several videos, but he's probably not going to be able to anymore. But um, you can really do everything yourself. So don't, um, like I know some of my blogger friends are like, oh, I need to wait for my husband to come home to take blog photos. If you want to shoot video, all you need, and I'll show you, all you need is like a tripod like this. You can use a phone, you can use whatever. Um, I've got a bigger version of this that's for, um, it's called the Joby Gorilla Pod, and you can put your um, DSLR on it. And all you have to do is point it at yourself or point it at what you want. Um, but yeah, shooting with two cameras really isn't that hard to shoot. Um, more the difficult thing afterwards is the editing and making sure your audio is synced up. Um, but yeah, so if you have any other technical questions, you know, again, I'll stick around. Last chance if you've got some questions about YouTubing. Um, but yeah, so YouTube is pretty much, YouTube and work and sewing is pretty much my life. And I have a lot of fun with this channel. This is um, really, you know, something that I really love and enjoy doing. And I thank you guys for watching. And let me know also in the comments, if you like this video, you like this live stream, feel free to give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you hate it. And let me know what you think about this new setup. Um, did it work well for you? Does the, is the audio okay? Is my mouth out of sync? Let me know. Also, I love that you can see the, co the comments now. I think that is one of the coolest things about this OBS setup because you can do a lot more. Um, I'm really happy with this. And moving forward, this is where the majority of the shows will be. If I'm out and about and say I wanna do something live with the iPod, maybe I'll do something like that, but for the most part, I think the shows are gonna be staying like this. Again, we are in my bedroom, so I know it's very exciting. And uh, yeah, go ahead and put a plug for your husband's cooking on, on your other channel. Um, yes, we do have another channel. If you go to um, the, my channel homepage, um, I have a link to the right to more approved. That is my husband's channel. He does cooking videos. He does all kinds of different stuff. Um, he does woodworking, so if you want to check out what my husband does when I am sewing, that is how you can see it. And, uh, so yeah, so I'll see you guys next week again. And again, if you, also in the comments, if you would like to, um, if you have a suggestion for a future live show, let me know. Like, this video here it was a suggestion from Penguin and Pear. So if you, if there's a topic you want us to talk about, uh, let me know in the comments and we can, we can do it. You know, I'm open to anything. Uh, but yes, yeah, so on August 20th, yeah, so I keep a calendar of my stuff. On August 20th, the show, and I've already even got it penciled in. Like I've got it penciled in um, work 3 to 11 p.m., 1 p.m. live show on YouTube Creator Day. So at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time on August 20th, that show, um, we're going to talk all about what happened at Creator Day. As long as it's hopefully it doesn't get canceled or something. Now that I'm uh, now that I'm saying that something something's gonna happen, but uh, is if all goes as planned, the show is gonna be at 1 p.m. and we're gonna talk about um, all about my day at the YouTube's Creator Day and see how that went. But I'm really excited about that, and I just want to thank you guys again for supporting the channel. And um, oh, and if you do 
you know, if you do really like what I'm doing and you want to support in some way, the way you can do it is um, anytime you click on one of the links, I've got to like a product or to an Amazon link or to my, um, my kit, my like sewing and quilting, sewing gear, or my sewing uh, equipment or my sewing supplies. Um, anything you buy on Amazon, I will get a little bit of credit for. So that helps out the channel a little bit. And that's something, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So if that's something that you are feel compelled to do, feel free to do it um, because that helps me out a little bit and uh, makes it a little makes it so I can maybe because in the future I would really like to uh, get some better equipment and also maybe do some projects that I wouldn't normally be able to do. So, anyways, I hope you guys are having a good Sunday and this has been fun and I hope you really enjoyed this new uh, format of the show, this new setup here because I am loving it. And I'm really enjoying, and I'll show you guys some other stuff too. Hold on one second. So, yeah, this is pretty sweet. So, yeah, so I can transition out of here. I can get rid of the chat. So, like, so now we're in the end of the show. I can do this thing. And I'm going to leave you guys with this. Anyways, happy Sunday, and I will see you guys next week. You have been joining in on a live edition of The Sewing Report. And if you're watching the replay, thank you for watching it too. And I'll see you guys again soon.